Well, folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton, and what you're looking at here is the makings of some of the very best refried beans you've ever eaten in your life. I'm going to get down here in front of the camera and show you how to assemble all these ingredients. And the finished product is going to be some, some nachos made from our refried beans. But this is an awesome recipe to use at camp or home or anywhere. So let me get in front of you now and put all this together and show you how we do it. Well, folks, I showed you all the ingredients that we're going to use to make these refried beans. Uh, something I'm really proud of. Who, who ever thought of putting uh, home cured ham in refried beans? But we're going to, and it's going to make it awesome. Actually, if you do put ham in your beans, or you can, you know, it really gives it a different flavor. It's really good. You can use ham hocks if you don't have the ham. Just some. Uh, we've got about a pound of beans, kosher salt, and I, I'm all about not messing up too many pots in camp, but this is some garlic and jalapeno and onion diced up here. I use the lid for a little bowl, less, less stuff to have to worry about cleaning. But we're gonna cook all this for about two hours. We're gonna put, let's just do it right now. <clears throat> we'll put our beans in here. And this is about a pound of beans. This was a two pound bag, I believe it was two pounds. <clears throat> Put a pound of beans in there. Now, this is some of the ham, excuse me folks, that I cured here at home from a wild hog. Sugar cured uh, ham smoked right out here in the uh, in the building I've got. So a little ham, this is a little bit much ham to put in here, but it'll, it'll cook to pieces. We're gonna cook these beans and all this for about, oh, two hours, but that ham, when, when you get through it, we're gonna have it all chopped up in little bitty pieces. It'll be incorporated in with the beans. So there's that, and this is pretty simple. Some jalapenos right out of my garden, onions, and garlic. So let's put that in there. Get all that down in there really good. And basically, all we're gonna do now is uh, cut the heat on and let this cook for about two hours, keeping a close watch. And then we'll reduce the water, mash the beans, put them in a cast iron skillet, and we'll be ready to go. So. Let's fire it up and uh, I'll be back with you when our beans are done. How about that? Well, folks, here is our refried beans at the consistency that I like. Let me kind of, just about the right consistency. Now, you might want them a little bit drier than this, but I like to leave a little moisture in them because a bunch of these I'm going to actually wind up freezing. So basically what I did, I cooked them down in that pot that we had on here a bit ago, boiled them down pretty low, and then I put them in a skillet with about a fourth of a cup of lard. Now you can, the, the Mexican folks always use lard. I like to use it. Um, you can use canola oil, either one, just an, an oil of some sort. But see how the, that lard just binds this together. It's not really that much lard in there. But I'll take all of these refried beans, let them cool down some, and we're gonna make some uh, nachos next. And I'm gonna show you a picture of the finished product. It'll take me a few minutes to get all that together. But what we don't use, I'm gonna freeze in a little plastic um, containers there, put them in the freezer, and at hunting camp or fishing camp on upcoming trips, you can defrost that, heat it up, and make nachos right there at camp. So let me show you a look at the finished product of the nachos, but that's the consistency we're looking for. And you talk, I've already sampled this, of course, with some chips, but very, very flavorful. One thing you want to remember, you're going to have to probably put a little bit more salt in here than you think you are. But you know that ham, that smoked ham that I made, you can't hardly even tell it that it's in there. It's all diluted and cooked down with the beans. So let's make some nachos next and take a look at those. Folks, here is our finished product, our refried beans put on some fresh corn tortillas with a little cheese sprinkled on top. Bingo, we have some camp nachos. I hope you enjoyed our little cooking segment today. Let's get back to the rest of the show. Lone Star Pond and Bargain Center, 6509 I-30 on the Frontage Road in Greenville. Your one-stop shop for TVs, electronics, computers, and gaming systems. Lone Star Pond offers a giant selection of hunting, fishing, outdoor gear, and firearms. We've got everything from lawn and garden equipment and job site tools to musical instruments. For the best deals and pond rates in town, come see us on the south side of the Frontage Road in Greenville. 
Need a part for the right price? Look for that red and blue sign, Henley Auto Supply, 1510 Stonewall. Over 800,000 CarQuest parts to choose from. Domestic, European, and Asian parts. Henley Auto Supply, 903-455-1969. 455-1969. Henley Auto Supply has the right part to keep your vehicle running. Backed by the best hometown service, Henley Auto Supply. Great people, great products, great prices. Henley Auto Supply and CarQuest. Hi folks, it's your old buddy Luke Clayton. What do you say we take a little break from our show here and let me give you a little tutorial on hunting with big bore air guns or with air guns in general. Uh, this is a Texan 45 caliber. I've killed a lot of game with my Texan with this one right here. This is the carbine. They also make a little bit longer barrel, but it's an awesome big bore air gun, PCP air gun. Now, if you're going to use air guns, you've got to have a tank. You've got to have a tank to fill it. And then, you know, actually with the, with the uh, Texan here, you fill it right here. Let me undo this for you. That's where you, there is where you put the air in it via this tank right here. Now, I'm actually filling this tank. It's an Air Ventura Pyramid Air uh, tank. But I'm filling it with this Air Force Air Guns compressor. We're going to turn this compressor on in a little bit. But there's a piston here that runs back and forth and pressures this this particular uh, compressor compresses up to 4,500 psi. Now I'm only only going to put about oh 3,500 in this tank, although the tank is rated for 4,500. So I think 3,500 is a good fill. Now. So that's the components. You've got, you've got to have a tank if you're going to be into PCP, big boy air guns. And then to fill the tank, to pressure the tank, you need a compressor. Air Force Air Guns makes one awesome compressor. And here's a picture of it. Show you the front of this compressor here, folks. Very simple operation. Uh, you can hook up alligator clamps on cables, a, a DC power, or right now I've got it hooked to, uh, to AC. And right here is a gauge. You can, you can check your gauge out here and you can actually set this if you want to fill it to say 3,000 or 3,500, set this and it'll cut off automatically, the compressor will. So with, with Texas now allowing big bore air guns for, you know, for our big game hunts, last year it started, a lot of you have a lot of questions about it. Not everybody is tuned in to hunting with a big boy air gun. So that's it. Basically, you need your rifle. And this Air Force air gun Texan, the ones you buy now, can generate 600 foot-pounds of energy. They have the new valve. Okay, you're going to need your air gun. You're going to need a tank so you, in the field so you can fill it. Fill your tank via this fitting right here. That's how you put air in it. This is the, this is the tank. Uh, right here the stock on the Air Force let me move this over so you can see it the stock on this gun is actually the pressure tank so you pressure this up to 3,000 PSI and uh, you're ready to go folks these are awesome awesome guns they're a lot of fun a lot of people still think of air, all air guns as being a little pump up pellet gun but let me tell you what, this Texan right here will kill a Cape Buffalo, folks. Let's get back to our regular regular show. I just thought this little break might be uh, educational for some of you that are thinking about hunting with a big boy air gun this fall. Your first set of wheels didn't come with hassles. It can be that way again at Tire Pros. Well, folks, it is your old buddy Luke Clayton, and you usually see me in front of this thing, but I get to be the cameraman. Now, this gentleman you see here is Mr. Stubby Stubblefield. Howdy, Stubby. Howdy. And my nephew, Billy Kilpatrick, who 
Yeah, and uh, Billy got it on Levon for about 20 some odd years for yes, crappie. Yes, sir. And what we're going to do is get that um, live scope of Stubby's. Stubby's been catching some crappie, and we're going to do something that's a little bit different today and fish for some brim and some crappie. Yes, sir. And Stubby, these old these brim are holding, you'll find an isolated tree, you were telling me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the brim are kind of suspended up a lots of times, and the crappie may be below them. Right, yes, sir. They're, the crappie are about 22 feet right down below them. But the brim are all the way from about 10 foot to 15 feet, and they're just thick right above them. And, if you, you know, you can fish a real, bit, real small, like 32nd ounce or 64th ounce jig and catch them too. But, you know, if you want to go through them to get the crappie, you can catch some crappie down there too. So hopefully today we'll catch crappie and some big brim. That'd be fun. And, you know, folks, if you watched our show last week, I believe it was, we was down here with, with my friend Stubby. We were fishing for catfish, and it was very windy. It was a filming challenge out there because of the wind. We had a little wind noise. Today's a lot quieter, uh, not much wind. So, uh, what we do out there on the water be a lot be a lot easier to, to get it done. And Billy, this is one of Stubby's custom rods. You you've been bragging on, man. This is it right here. Hold it up a little higher. Stubby special. I caught. Lots and lots of crappie on it. One of the best crappie rides I've ever had made for me. Uh, I went out with Stubby Luke here uh, last year, late in the season when it was cold, and he had Stubby had one of these he was using. And when we got through, I told him when we got back to the boat ramp, I said, "Make me one up," because I saw how good it was, and it is a good. I was ride. I was with you when you did it, and Stubby. I've heard Billy's done nothing but brag. He was bragging on. Him and another good fisherman was out, and the other guy didn't have one of those. I think Billy smoked him. What's that sock on this? Uh -oh. Grab that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This here. Show me this. Set back down there. We'll take. It. That's something I haven't seen. Yeah. This is a Lake Fork sock, and uh, it just protects your rod. And in the end of it, Luke, if you'll see, what's different about this sock and most of them is they got a tip saver. Oh yeah. And that's yeah. very important when you put them in your rod box. Yeah. Some of them don't have that. And they'll hit the end of it and break the tips. But Ryan and them got a really good sock. It slides on easy. Uh, Heck yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's really a it's a really well made. Now where do you do you get these down here at Lake Fork? Yeah, I get them at Lake Fork Tackle at yeah. uh, Ronnie and Maryland's place up there. It's yeah, it's called Red, Red Sock. Well, a fine rod like honestly these custom rods you oh, make, yeah. it's worth. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to put a nothing on these no, rods. It's no, no. You know, you'll see, and what I, Billy's talking about these rods, and a lot of people, you can buy a rod anywhere, and and that's what I say. Any rod will catch fish, kind of like my catfish bait. Any bait to catch catfish, but when you can get one that you can hold up and just do this to, you and balance. rock back, yep, and to be level, that means you're not fighting with your hand all day holding a heavy rod in the back or one that's tilting forward, and they'll just lay level on your on your hand. And these are presidential reels that I use, but that it's just, I don't know what Billy's got on. Billy's got a, a ugly spin on there. So it's, yeah. they're balanced almost to every reel. Well. Uh, and they, they just, there's so much, I mean, I can't say enough about them. They just, they, they're so sensitive and uh, light, light lightweight, better. they don't weigh anything. You bet. Well, folks, I've got about 150 years of experience fishing guides. One of them's a nephew and one's a good friend here. So, Stubby. Yeah, what do you say if we jump in that? Let me just show them the boat and we'll go crawl in that big comfortable boat and go catch some. What do you say? Yeah, that's one of them new toys I got there too. That's a new blazer boat there. All right, let's take a look at that then we'll go fishing. How about that it? That sounds like a winner to me. Check it out, folks. We're going to jump in this boat and go out there and see if we can catch some fish. We'll join you back out there on the water. Well, Stubby, you, go to, you are rigged up for crappie. Now these are thermoclines. Thermocline lures. Let's take a look at the colors and all that we're going to be using. Yeah. Yeah. This, these right here colors been working good. These here, the monkey milk, and uh, and the tadpole. Let's let's look at these. That's the natural shad. Yeah. Here's a monkey milk that they make over there. That's been really hot on this lake let's here on Lake it. Fork. Thermocline lures. Yeah, I've used these before and they are some good baits. Yeah. Sure, they're made right down here on the lake. Yep. They? Todd and Melinda over there right off the 515. Yep. They've got them in the RV. There's an RV resort over there called uh, 
uh, A and A and R, I believe it is. Okay. And he's, he's got a building right there, and he sells those right out of that building. Well, let's go put them to work, let's buddy. Let's go catch them. So, Stubby, what you're doing here, buddy, is looking for an isolated structure. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look here. Yeah, these are the ones I found the other day out here. Yeah. Yep. And so, hopefully, yeah, they got fishies on them when we oh, get Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the new Lawrence Live right there. That's it. State of the art. I did a newspaper article, you know, last week on your your uh, graph and your uh, live scope. And folks, we're gonna once we get off, settle down and fishing, we'll we'll do some, take some shots of the uh, the live scope and actually show these fish. Probably taking the bait, huh, Stubby? Oh yeah, you can actually see them take the bait. Last week we we were able to film this, but there was so much chop on the water, it was hard to get a good steady picture. You yes, know, sir. But we'll we'll get it done today. Well, folks, Stubby has found that one isolated tree and dropped a buoy on it. Stubby, the autopilot on this thing, though, really, the the spot lock on your on your. Uh, trolling motor, it'll it'll keep you right on it. Yeah, it'll keep you right on. You got a little breeze here today. You got to have a little bit of breeze with these spot locks. Yep, it keep you positioned. Stubby, we actually see that little old one sixteenth ounce or whatever crappie jig in yep. the water here. That's see it falling there down. It goes right there. That is too awesome. So those are those are fish. Down there, swimming mm -hmm. around, going from one tree to the other. It looks like. Yep. And yeah, we're not dead on those trees yet. Not quite on it. I'm gonna swing. Watch your hook here, Billy. I'm gonna swing till we get on those trees. There's two out here. I'm looking for. This. They're right at the top of the water. I mean, you can hit them. Yeah. Very. very and that's shy. the ones I was on the other day that we kept catching a little fish on. Stubby, we're well. We've moved under the bridge, and you've spot locked on to a bunch of fish. Right there, you've got, you got, got one you right got there. one on. Now this is night crawlers, something anybody yeah. can do. Fishing for brim, right? Yeah. Looks like pretty good brim. Get it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Bring oh, him in yeah. here and let's that's take nice. a look at it. Oh yeah. yeah. That's a good one there. Let's take a good look at that yeah. brim. Yeah. Put him in my hand size so you can see. I got and, a great big hand. As we as we mentioned, stuff his hand about the size of a, a baseball <laughs> yeah. catcher's mitt. That's a pretty fish, and I'll tell you what, that's some good eating too right there. Yeah, that's a nice fish there. You'll catch where there's one, there's more in it. And bucket. anybody can do it, just come up underneath the bridge and tie up to the bridge or whatever yeah. they want to do, and they can catch them right here. It's, you know, it's a, anybody type of thing here. It's nothing. You, you bet. Well, he'll, he'll... No secret. We'll put him in there with a bunch more, and he'll wind up being some very tasty eating. Well, Stubby, had a great time, buddy. Got some of these big old hand-sized brim, but... I will say again, I'll reiterate, if you want to come down the fork and catch a bunch, a big old box of fish to eat, these channel catfish, we couldn't keep the channel catfish off, you know. They just buy, they're just here. This lake is absolutely full of channel cat. I think it's probably one of the best channel cat lakes there is around. It just, it just is, and, uh, and like I said, you can just take stubbies or anybody's cat, uh, catfish bait out there. Mine's a little more pleasant, I think. No doubt, but no you, doubt. But uh, you can take catfish bait, throw out some range cubes, and you can limit out in two hours, you, you know, bet. on good fish. We caught, I had a trip Sunday, we probably caught 145 to 50 with, with kids in the boat. Yeah, exactly. So, bait and hooks know, and all that. Yeah, I was bait and hooks and they kept me pretty busy. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Stubby, somebody wants to learn more about your bait or catfishing here at Fork, what's, I guess, leave the phone number is about the best way, right? Yeah, that's the way I do it. I ship bait the same way. It's 817-366-5492. Being on the move used to be hassle-free. Find your way there again at Tire Pros.
folks, that wraps up another show. We certainly enjoy you tuning in each week and watching Luke and I in uh, our adventures in the outdoors. For more information and to watch some of our prior episodes, please visit us at catfishradio.org. Until next time, happy times in the outdoors.